I have a question that I've been itching to ask you. <gasps> Go for it. No way. I swear. And at that time, I kind of was like, whoa, like, what am I going to do? Like, I kind of, my identity was. And hi, I'm Christiana Maction, the Dubai matchmaker. Hey, y'all, this is Christiana. I remember speaking specifically to a client, and they were. Uh, if I wanted to say that, I would have wrote. I am really excited to have Christiana Maction sitting with me today. Okay, my guest today is Christiana Maction, aka the Dubai Matchmaker. Oh, thank you, guys. Christiana. Christiana Maction. Christiana Maction. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. Today we have an amazing guest. Christiana Maction. She is a matchmaker for ultra high net worth individuals all over the globe, but she's here in Dubai. She has over 30 years experience in this space, and I cannot wait to ask her these amazing questions that I have lined up for you guys. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. Christiana, welcome, how are you? <gasps> Thank you so much, Amina, for having me. I am so excited to be here. No, it's really excited to have you here. And you're from the US, right? I am, I grew up in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so people always ask me, because there aren't that many Americans out here. They're like, how did you get to Dubai? And yeah, I'm like, yeah. it's actually, it's a crazy story. <laughs> yeah, what is the story? How did oh, you get gosh. to Dubai? <laughs> so um, I originally moved here, or to the UAE in 2016. Yeah. I first moved from New York to Abu Dhabi. I was actually in a relationship. Okay, okay. I had met uh, my former partner in New York. He was there on a business trip. Mm -hmm. We had a whirlwind romance. How he long were you guys together? Uh, total, I would say almost two years, Okay, maybe like a year and eight months, something like that, mm -hmm. uh, at the end of it. But so we had met in New York, we had a whirlwind romance, like we spent six weeks in Sicily, London, Canada, and then we did long distance for a year. Sounds like a movie. It felt like a movie. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sicily, <laughs> London, Canada. <laughs> yeah, it, it was lovely and listen, probably one of the best relationships I ever had. And he was working out here in Abu Dhabi. Okay, amazing. Ended up moving here, but then our relationship didn't work out. So we ended up splitting. Crazy, crazy breakup, but... Sorry, <laughs> sorry to hear no, that. No, 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 no. I thank him every single day because without him, I would never be here. Like, I think about it. My entire family lives within five miles of each other in New York. So why would I have ever left? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It makes sense. It makes sense. Sometimes, totally. sometimes when you're going through, like, your history... You're like, oh, this happened because of this, or I broke up with this person so I could be here, or like all those Definitely. sorts of things. Definitely, and I always say that man's rejection is God's protection. In some way or another, like a closed door opens up another door for you. So I'm always grateful to him to bring me here because I wouldn't have what I have today and what I built without that journey. Yeah, 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 of course. I mean, it's we're all so thankful for him because <laughs> otherwise we wouldn't have Christiana here today. Yeah. Um, so run me through your story. Like, how did yeah. you get into this industry? Oh, gosh. It's kind of funny. I feel like I've lived five different lives already. <laughs> <laughs> so I actually started my career. I was an athlete. I was a springboard diver. Really? Yes. I went to university. I dove there. And I got my degree in finance. Mm -hmm. Decided that finance wasn't for me. After an internship at Merrill Lynch living in New York, I was like, nope, not for me. Okay, okay. <laughs> so I ended up getting my master's in education. I, wor I worked as a teacher. I taught kindergarten and first grade in the South Bronx in New York. So finance, teacher. Yeah. Okay. And then we're going to work our way <laughs> back to where we are today. <laughs> And then when I moved out here, I was working in education. Even though I had split from my partner, I decided, hey, I'm going to stay in the UAE because I really saw that, especially in like an archaic kind of industry like education, mm -hmm. the way that it is in the States versus the way that it is here. I really saw that you get promoted based on merit here rather than longevity. Is that what you found about Dubai? Definitely. Really? Like I became a leader in a school and a published author by the age of 29. Oh, amazing. In New York, I would have had waited till I was like in my late 40s, early 50s in order to be in a position like I was. Like, so so yeah. you'd say because of the, the structure of the way Dubai is, it helped you grow quicker? 
Definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I would say that when you take action in a place like the UAE, which I, I coin as a land of opportunity, if you take the action and you actually put forth those steps to make it happen for yourself, you can. And I am so blessed and so grateful that I did climb that ladder very quickly here. Yeah. And it led me to what I have today yeah, in like yeah. a really like roundabout kind of way. Okay. So in 2020, as you know, we all were home. And when I think about that education space that I was in, I was home. I wasn't working nearly as much. And I decided, you know what? I'm going to start an Instagram account. And the Instagram it account. It always starts on an Instagram <laughs> account. It always starts on the, hey, we started our relationship yeah, yeah, on, on the an gram. Instagram account. <laughs> okay, yeah. And I um, started an account called Dating in Dubai. Okay. And it was documenting my experience as a Western expat dating in lockdown and post lockdown. Oh, go. Wow. Okay. <laughs> After crunch, you're like, I can see it like burning in your brain. You're like, what do you want? Yeah, first I was going to ask, why did you call it dating in Dubai? But yeah. you answered my question there. Mm -hmm. So how were you dating when yeah. we were like locked down and we couldn't go out and those sorts of things? So I called it a comedic account because I was really kind of documenting the ridiculousness of Zoom dates. I was like, is this really real right now? But as you know, Dubai, we... I think it opened up in May. So we were only really in like true lockdown for maybe a couple of months yeah, or yeah. three months. However, the numbers worked out there. And um, I think that people were really attracted to my empowered uh, dating standpoint. Mm -hmm. I always talked about dating with high standards, but zero expectations. Yeah, okay. And people would ask me questions and it was it was kind of funny. Like, you know, you, you get to dog a couple of the people on it. So. Yeah. <laughs> It was fun, but all respectful. Yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> anyway, though, at that time, I was leading a staff of 55 mm -hmm. uh, in a school. My uh, school had caught wind of the account. Let me go in 24 hours. They said, this doesn't match the ethos of our school, and let me go. And <gasps> yeah. No way. I swear. And at that time, I kind of was like, whoa, like, what am I going to do? Like, I kind of... My identity was being like a leader in education. And I was like, what do I do now? And I had like four months to just, really just think. Yeah, go. <laughs> so when they let you go, how did mm -hmm. that make you feel? So my kind of like, not argument, but I was that my stance was I said, what I do outside of this building, this school has no kind of bounds on what I create the kind of success that I create inside this building. Yeah. But like I said, rejection is protection or it leads you down a certain path. So I took that time because it was like four months where I wasn't working. And I took that time to reflect and think, okay, this account became quite popular. What are people seeking in the market? And in a very like, my truth, truth, truth that I've always lived by or since living here is that I have never met the most amazing people ever than I have living here. Mm -hmm. Also having this account, men complained about one thing with dating, women complained about another thing with dating, which is really the same thing. And also like you guys teach each other yeah, <laughs> what, yeah. what to complain about. So I said, I want to be the bridge that connects these people because I already had such a network and a database of people that I was like, I've always been a connector my entire life, yeah. whether that was friendship, business, romantic. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me kind of create something that would actually work in this region. Now, <laughs> contrary, I mean, this might be controversial a little bit, but I didn't get any certification for matchmaking. Really? Okay. I did not. I literally sat down and this was right at the time when they had started introducing golden visas. Yeah. Work, uh, work remote visas, mm -hmm. uh, retirement visas. There was a massive shift, and you're in the real estate space. Yeah. There was a massive shift from renting to owning property here in the UAE. So what I had then said, I was like, hey, people are viewing Dubai as less of a transient city and more as a permanent place to live. They also had changed the laws about living with a partner. Yeah. And having a child out of wedlock. So I literally was like, you know what? This is the time. I consulted a heavy duty legal team and I said, this is what I want to bring to the region, a matchmaking agency, but super duper public. How do I do this? What kind of things do I need in my contracts that will be legal here? 
because I wanted to cross my T's, dot my I's. So like there are certain um, parameters that we follow and agreements that we have in all of our contracts, whether you're a paying client or a database member. And when I opened up my agency, the way I thought about my packages, I said, how would I want to date in Dubai being a part of an elite sector? What do I want? And that's how I created my first packages. Amazing. Amazing. Literally. That's, that's <laughs> really good. But uh -huh. one of the things I want to ask you is you're working with ultra high net worth clients, yes. right? Mm -hmm. And one thing that we all know here in Dubai is that um, there's a lot of rich, wealthy people here, right? Yes. Uh, men and women. Um, how have you found finding couples for the high net worth men or women here? How has it been for you? You know what? It's really funny. I think that no matter how much money you have, what status or power you have, there are all, everybody has the same kind of like underlying issues, quote unquote issues in finding a partner, like finding what? in love. I mean, it might be more elevated as a high net worth individual when you think about like demand. But when I think about finding love, especially in a city like Dubai, it's a buffet of beautiful people. Literally. 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 You can have your pick of anything. I, 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 I would go to the beach club and I'm like, You're wow. You're like, what? Heads turning. On? Everybody's just so good looking. And I find it like, yeah. it's a nice place to be. Definitely. I don't feel like it's um, one of the guests I had previously. She said Dubai isn't for the faint hearted. Yeah. You, you don't come here if, mm -hmm. um, if you're weak. Correct. And um, I must say that like the, the level of beauty in one place I've never seen anywhere else. And you know what I think it breeds as well? It breeds this kind of notion of always searching for the bigger, better, badder things. Right. Like maybe never being really satisfied with what you have. But it's interesting because the clients that I work with, because of our package prices, people really have this assumption that I'm working with like party boys who are players and constantly out. If I'm very honest with you, the people that seek our services are more introverted. Maybe they're people who had their heads down building a business and they don't have a large network to date from or haven't made those connections. So that's why they seek our services. And another reason why we have like the clients that we have is I think they have the mentality of outsourcing everything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think if I was ever single, which yeah. hopefully will never be the case, I'd just <laughs> buy one of your packages because yeah. I don't want to swipe on Tinder no. and go on these apps and just meet anybody and everybody. I want someone to understand my needs, my criteria, everything exactly. that I'm looking for mm -hmm. and have like a pool of people that could be a good fit instead mm -hmm. of me going on... 20 to 30 dates. I mean, yes. what is the average? How many dates are people going on these days like to actually find the perfect person? <laughs> well, uh, you want to know. So I'm, I'm I'm developing a tech product at the moment. But whilst I was doing that, I was doing a lot of research. Yeah, OK. And in that research, I was talking to uh, to my brother and he, he lives in New York. Okay. And we were having a great conversation about this because he's single. Um, okay. One of my brothers, he's single. And he was saying that one of his friends literally had an excel sheet right so he was on w w one of the apps oh god yes and he had an excel sheet so now he's in a relationship but he had an excel sheet where he was documenting and tracking the data of when he s matched with somebody how many messages it took to get on a date with them how much money he was spending on each of these dates. Oh. It, it was just for data purposes. He's a very like uh, data driven person. Sounds like a bit of me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How much he was spending on these dates in terms of transport, getting there, yeah, paying yeah. for it, all of this. And how many women it was taking for him to actually form a serious relationship. And you know, right? So they say these da apps, like a lot of them are freemium, right? Free, but then this. He had calculated that. I think it took him maybe eight months to find his partner. He had calculated over $15,000 just to get like this one partner. Oh, and wow. and I, I was saying, I was like, I could have saved you so much time. <laughs> Not money because we cost a lot, <laughs> but <laughs> I could have saved you just so much time, time and that effort. It, yeah, yeah, but yeah. that effort, the waste effort, like all of the dates that he had calculated in order or had to go on in order to be in this relationship with somebody. Yeah. And when I think about like when our clients join, right? First of all, there's like an extreme vetting process in order for you to become a client of ours. What is the vetting process? <laughs> so um, number one is that you have to apply for a screening call. When you apply for a screening call, we obviously we have some information on you. Yeah. My team does checks. I mean, I won't get into how we do the checks, but we do checks. <laughs> 
<laughs> like thorough checks? Yes, we do checks um, on certain criteria just to make sure that firstly, you're a serious person. Mm -hmm. You can afford our services. And um, yeah, we like do reference some check. checks and yeah, stuff like I that. Do a little bit of scrubbing. <laughs> <laughs> so then, from the scrubbing, um, we I, I will then take you on a screening call. And on that screening call, I have certain questions that I ask to find out if you are serious about the process. Keep in mind though that everybody has a different criteria that are sorry when they join a matchmaking service as to what success would be for them. Okay. So for example. I have clients that, yeah, su success for them, getting married, um, starting a family. Yeah. Some of them are recently divorced okay. and have never dated in their life because maybe they got married when they were 20. And they're like, I just don't know what dating is. Yeah. And I want to make sure that I'm on dates with qualified partners. Mm -hmm. And maybe they don't want to be seen on a dating app because of their profile and things of that nature. Other success for some of our clients is finding a partner. Maybe they're retired and they're already divorced um, once, time, twice, thrice, maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just want uh, to find a partner that they can live out the rest of their years with. So there's different criteria that a lot of our, our clients come to us with. In that screening call, I basically assess if we can find you your success in this. And if we have the right database for you, right? Because we're in a really fortunate enough position, my team and I, that we get to choose our clients. And then from there, we then have a preliminary match session. And this is like really where we assess, are we going to be a good fit for one another? And the reason why we have such a high success rate at over 95% is because we do go through this process. And in that preliminary match session, it's a paid call. You're on with me, you're on with my partners in the US, I create a presentation for you of current database members that we think might be a fit for you. Do you, mm -hmm. do you get people that are really focused on physical appearance? Men, so most of our clients are men. We really mainly work with men okay. and men are visual creatures. Yes, it's just are. in their nature. They just can't help it. It's just who they are. It, <laughs> it is, but what I will say is that uh, a lot of our clients put a major, major emphasis on profession, on education of a partner, on successes and accomplishments that their partner has, because they also want to have somebody that's not necessarily a trophy wife in terms of looks, but maybe a trophy partner in terms of, wow, look at all the amazing things my partner has accomplished. And those are like my favorite clients to work with. Yeah. Because they're really looking for that true partnership. Yeah. They want someone that they can like literally put... Th there's a thing that I heard the other day was saying that you don't want to be with someone that just values you for your looks. You want someone that actually enjoys your process, your growth, all your yeah. accolades and what you've achieved mm -hmm. because they essentially put you on a pedestal and they're like always Definitely. hyping you up and pushing mm -hmm. you. Um, and I think that's quite hard to find as a, as a girl, like in, mm -hmm. a, in, in the dating pool of what I've heard my friends go through. Yeah. Um, and it really depends. It varies. What would you say in, in terms of like your experience of like dating in Dubai, what are the issues in Dubai? So besides having a buffet of beautiful people and maybe having like this kind of mentality of there's always a bigger, better, badder person out there, I would say it's your circle. And maybe you're kind of stuck in going out in the same social circles, the same scenes. Maybe you're stuck in the DIFC scene, popping about those bars. Maybe you're stuck in a certain neighborhood. And maybe you're not putting yourself out there in uh, those kind of ways. I always tell people to focus on things that you enjoy or the things that elevate you or grow you. Mm -hmm. So if you want to meet a compatible partner, I always talk about hobbies habits and interests mm -hmm. think about something that you either really love doing or something you really want to learn new about mm -hmm. and do that because then you're going to be in a space where you have at least one compatibility point with somebody and you could attract a partner there so let's just say you're a single girl you're yeah. in dubai uh -huh. and you're trying to attract a guy of high value mm -hmm. where would you go where would um, you be what would you do? The first thing I would tell them to do is write a list of all of the things that you want in a partner, qualities, values, and then become that list. Stop searching for it in somebody else. Become that person and you will attract that in a partner, period.
Do you know, I was listening to this thing, um, and I can't really remember the person, but they said that a lot of these girls that are searching for the men of high value, mm -hmm. they're not necessarily portraying themselves as a high value woman. 1000%. Um, so like, I have nothing against girls like posting bikini pictures online. There's no. nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. But there's like a there's like a line. There's like a fine line of how you should post something before it becomes too sexualized. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, mm -hmm. I don't know what your opinion is. Um, and nowadays, like there's these girls that are like super sexualized online um, and they're very promiscuous, but they want a guy that's high value. Mm -hmm. um, but the high value mm -hmm. man doesn't necessarily set settle with a girl that posts stuff like that online. Mm -hmm. Do you think scrubbing up your online social media presence is crucial if you're trying to settle down? 1000%. And I'll tell you this because our clients. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when we do set up dates for our clients, we do everything. Plan, book, confirm, manage feedback, manage communication. We do it all for them. But then once they're through like that process and both parties have agreed like, hey, we're actually we're a match for one another. Let's continue on. The first thing that I'll hear back from my clients is I looked at their Instagram, their socials. This is not the person for me. And I will literally, I'll, what, why? But you guys had a great connection in person, live, in person. And they're like, no, the person that they're portraying to be or the persona that they have on socials is doesn't match with the lifestyle I want to live or the life I want to live. I find very interesting. Okay, and what are the mm -hmm. examples? Let's just say this. Okay. <laughs> what are the examples? I'll tell you what, it's kind of funny. What they said <laughs> that doesn't match for them. Okay. Because these are like, yeah. we have to think about it in, in a way because a lot of girls, or let's just say men, they don't think they're doing anything wrong. They're just Correct. being themselves, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's sort of like everything is about the first impression. So what are the examples of what they saw that they didn't like? So a lot of the clients that I have are serious people yeah, yeah. in terms of uh, business. Um, maybe they're in certain circles that are political or just um, high business circles. And uh, the other complaint, uh, one of the complaints I got the other day was um, this person is dancing on uh, Instagram, <laughs> like dancing the and TikTok singing. Dance. I don't know what it was because I, I, for me, I don't care about social media. Like I talk about what I talk about and it is what it is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he was like, I don't take her seriously after watching that. And I thought that was interesting. <laughs> that is interesting because mm -hmm. if you look at like, let's just say the new uh, generation yeah. coming up, um, a lot of them are dancing on TikTok mm -hmm. and uh, are lip syncing. Uh, yeah. Not that there's anything wrong with that. No. There's nothing wrong with it, but it can put people off. There's a shoe for every foot. Yeah. I will say this. There's always a match for you out there. Just because you don't get on with this one person doesn't mean that you're never going to find a match. You're never going to be with anybody. No, it just has to do with maybe they just weren't a perfect match for one another. Mm -hmm. But I found that really interesting when he said that. I was like, hmm, okay. Now, now i got to scour the database, <laughs> look at everyone's socials. Yeah. Who's not dancing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even I've come across some people online um, and there might be males and they've asked me stuff and I just can't. It's so bad because we live in quite a judgmental society because of yes. what you have online. Mm -hmm. And I've got nothing wrong with, like, I, I understand that everyone's got to do what they have to do. You know, we're living in a world of, like, blowing up on social media and yes. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But, like, if you, if a guy's got his six pack out online, mm -hmm. it, it kind of, like, displays a different image. And same goes for girls. And mm -hmm. same, it might be, like, doing a TikTok dance and, like, shaking your, you know, your body <laughs> online. Um, but... It's just bizarre because that's mm. how we're moving. How would you say people would need to act or um, portray themselves online now to, to be able to attract the right person? Be you, whatever you want. Like I said, there's a shoe for every foot. Don't try and cater to fit into somebody else's mold. I don't think that that's authentic. I think be you, be truly you. Make sure or just be very conscious that of what you're putting online, this is seen to the public. If you have a public profile, this is seen. But also, like, don't try to fit into somebody else's mold because then you're not creating an authentic connection with somebody either. What I find really interesting, and my friend said this the other day, she's uh, in a relationship, and they had uh, her and her partner had some kind of, like, riff. 
But the number one thing she said, and I looked at her and I said, I'm going to steal that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I'm going to steal that for Instagram. She said, I am never going to regret being 100% authentic me. And she's like, and that's how I will always act in this relationship, no matter what. And I said, that's so true, because if you're pretending or trying to cater to somebody else, else's notions or quote unquote requirements, then what are you standing for? Who are you? What are your thoughts mm-hmm. on dating apps and how, <laughs> how much they affect the matchmaking okay. side of things? So the clients that come to us, they're not on dating apps, period. Yeah. yeah. Um, an overall consensus about dating apps is that, first of all, they're around because they work sometimes, obviously, right? Or else they wouldn't be around. Yeah. I would say that the dating apps give a very false perception that there is an endless pool of qualified people out there. When in actuality, how many of these profiles are real? How many of these profiles are vetted? How many of these profiles are authentic? Mm -hmm. And um, well, I'm trying to change that because I'm currently developing. It's not a dating app. It's an anti-dating app. (laughs) An anti-dating app. It is. So with the services that we provide, I call ourselves like a matchmaking concierge. And the prices that we have for that one-to-one personalized experience with us isn't accessible to most people. But I know that we are creating so much love and connection here in the region and worldwide that I said, I want more people to have access to these services. So basically, I am digitizing what I have created with the agency, putting it in an app, but it is not just for romantic connections. It's also for so for friendships, social connections. Okay, interesting. So what the app will be, it's Maction, Match and Meet, <laughs> coming okay. out Q3. <laughs> amazing. Yes. Um, we'll have to bring you back on to talk about that. Yes, properly. and I can't wait. We just signed some amazing collaborations, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> um, but what the app is going to be is basically a vetted platform for high-earning professionals in expat-dominated cities that are seeking to form meaningful connections. So there is a process to get onto the app. Application, verification through LinkedIn, and a Zoom video call to make sure that you're the right person. There's also some AI mixed in there in order to kind of like prove authenticity and verify. Once you're on the platform, we match you with compatible partners, whether that's for friendship or romantic. Mm-hmm. Now, I won't get into like the features because it's not launched yet, but yeah. I will say that this app will actually get you in front of compatible people and will eventually kind of expedite and automate the entire social experience for expats. Because when I think about romantic, like people are searching for an alternative to the dating apps, period. That's number one. Number two, when, like, when, what I said, I moved to Abu Dhabi first. And I lived in Abu Dhabi for like two and a half years. How did you find that living in Abu Dhabi? Because it's completely yeah. different to Dubai, right? Definitely. I, and being from New York, like I needed more, yeah, yeah, more yeah. vibe. And um, I walked away with one friend from Abu Dhabi. Isn't that crazy? Really? Because I feel like as expats, we're kind of, um, somebody said, oh, this is what it's called. Proximity settling. When you kind of, your friend group becomes maybe the people that you work with, yeah. people that you live by. And I remember having like a group of friends in Abu Dhabi and thinking to myself, I would never choose these friends in New York. Really? When I lived there, maybe um, because I had come with a partner. So I kind of already had a set group of friends. And then when we split, I had no friends. So I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Yeah, so yeah. then I did the default, was friends with people who I worked with friends from people that I had met in proximity to where I lived. And what I will say is that this app will help you, will help more expats actually form meaningful connections with compatible people, period, and expedite that process. I think I do a bit of proximity settling. All the, it's just human nature. Yeah, it's I think human I'm quite nature. bad at that, actually, because mm-hmm. I've been in Dubai 14 months, and I work from home a lot, and I do, like, but I make friends with, people in my building yeah or people yeah. that are like going to the same classes as me and mm-hmm. stuff like that it's just easier as opposed to like going out to a networking event uh, or, or meeting different people and, and just yeah. meeting people in the same industry as me but what i will say is that 
what you said you make friends with people you go to classes with yeah think about that though that's a hobby that you enjoy so you're more you're more likely to meet a compatible person there because you're into the same thing yeah because i like mm -hmm. like go to pilates a lot and yeah. like go to barry's and stuff like that which i absolutely love and I prefer to make friends that are into like fitness. Exactly. Because mm -hmm. it's like when you're friends with people that are not, you naturally, I know. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. say anything mm -hmm. like, I'm not being fat phobic. And <laughs> <laughs> I have no it's issues. Okay. Yeah. Um, but when, I, when I've been friends with people or work, I mean, I used to work in a real estate job and I worked next mm -hmm. to a girl that was like, she didn't really work out and stuff. She just constantly uh, offered me biscuits and stuff like that. Yes. Was okay. You, not your thing. Not my <laughs> thing. I'm like, do you not understand? We live in Dubai. There's a beach and I need to look good. Yes. Um, so it's nice to have friends within within that circle. Well, you know what it is too, especially if you're thinking about being like more like fitness centric, right? Yeah. And wellness and all of that. It's also habits that go into it. If you're talking about somebody offering you biscuits all the time, right? You think about the habits that you share with your partner. Maybe are the two of you early risers? Are the two of you both night owls and things like this? How much do you work out a week? And that also creates like that compatibility. And when I know before we got on the pod, you're talking about intermittent fasting. Yeah, you yeah. probably wouldn't get on with somebody who didn't even know what intermittent fasting was. Yes, yeah, you're like, like what? <laughs> I agree. I think it's yeah. um, like my partner. I've been with him five years and we wake up in the morning together and Same. he'll mm -hmm. do like his stretching and then he'll go upstairs and go to the gym mm -hmm. and then I'll go and do my class. But in the evening is when we do like an uh, two hour walk together Lovely. around the marina and stuff and just catch up and talk. Cause a lot of people sit in front of the TV as a couple and they think they're spending time. No, there's, there's no there. connection. There's, no, there's nothing. There's no connection. I think, um, I can't remember the exact words, but it was Jay Shetty. I saw, I had seen like, you know, when he gets stuck in like a scroll hole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was stuck in a scroll hole and I saw Jay Shetty and he was talking about uh, intimacy. Yeah. Okay. And he brought up that exact thing you were speaking on in terms of P uh, partners are kind of confusing intimate time or connection with watching a Netflix show together. Yeah. Rather than having that, what you're talking about, that intellectual exchange. Yeah. Or physical or whatever it is. Emotional exchange yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Because when you're watching TV, you're not really talking, are you? You just mm -mm. sat there. Commenting. Ma maybe just cuddling or whatever. But mm -hmm. like most of the time when we're walking, I'm like 80% talking. I don't stop. But he's just <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But guess what? If he was a talker too, then it wouldn't work out. So you guys are like your emotional yin to your yang. So it works. Yeah, yeah. So he's just like, when I'm quiet or when I'm feeling antisocial, it's like, is everything okay? And I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I just can't be bothered today or something. Mm. So it's nice. It's nice to have that time um, with your partner where you're just not literally brain dead and just sat there yeah. doing nothing. Mm -hmm. um, what would your advice be to people that are young now um, mm. and they're looking for love? What would oh be gosh. your first thing that you would say to some, let's just say your niece or your nephew, what advice yeah. would you give them? How old are they? These let's say they're like 20, 25. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Firstly, I would say that dating should be the most fun time in your life. Date everything. In terms of, like I would say that People who are in Dubai kind of have an advantage here because you can date the entire map rather than somebody who might live in like a hometown or like a smaller city where it's more of a homogeneous population. Mm -hmm. We're here. We have the entire rainbow. I mean, you're a rainbow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were just saying that. So I'm Puerto Rican, Filipino and Turkish. And I grew up in New York. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, can you imagine and the you food are? in our house? Like, yes. it's going to be amazing. So d did you like... So mm -hmm. you'd say here is it's like dating a whole like different map. different map. Yeah. And it's great because then you can actually you have the opportunity to find out what you are attracted to, right? Whether that's physical, emotional, intellectual, um with with somebody rather than maybe being stuck in like a homogeneous kind of environment. Yeah. Right? And um another great great advice, I really despise when people say my other half, my better half. You are a whole person in yourself. And when you start using those words like um, being half of a person, then you're devaluing yourself. I would say to seek a partnership where one plus one equals three. What is the added value that this partner is bringing to you? And if there is no added value, 
why are you settling in that relationship? Interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's some good advice, <laughs> some good nuggets there, guys. Yeah. We, we have to make that into good <laughs> snippets for TikTok. For sure. So um, from your experience, how has, because obviously you're from New York, mm -hmm. right? What is, because I know people that say London's completely different to Dubai in terms of dating. Yeah. How is New York and Dubai, like they're kind of on par with each other, would you say? Or would you say Dubai's a complete different market? <laughs> The way that I love to describe Dubai is that it is, it's interesting because it has such a different vibe in the sense of it's a land of opportunity. Mm -hmm. You have a financial hub here that's much like New York. Dubai, I think, in the future will be the next Silicon Valley. So you kind of have like that San Francisco vibe, but it's LA weather mm -hmm. all the time. But then you got bodies from Miami and the most beautiful people you've ever seen. So mm -hmm. Dubai is a completely, totally different animal to anywhere else in the world. But I wouldn't change it for the world. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> interesting. Mm -hmm. um, and another thing that I wanted to ask you is obviously matchmaking. Yeah. It's, there's a lot of um, different opinions about matchmaking and different yeah. perspectives. G could you describe like some of the things that people think matchmaking is like mm -hmm. it might be the last resort um because yeah what i've heard is people go to matchmakers when they've gone through you know dating apps or they've mm -hmm. dated loads of people the recommendations of their friends are there they've been uh, it's literally the last resort what would you say is different to that i would say that matchmaking is really for people who don't have the time mm -hmm. right don't have the time, might not have the resources and want to outsource their entire love life to professionals. Because what we do behind the scenes, not only do we have the largest matchmaking database in the world with over 40,000 members, but we are vetting each and every single candidate that we even put before you. Not only that, once there is a match on both sides, we plan, book, confirm the date, manage the feedback, manage the communication. So it's kind of like this hands-off approach where you have an expert who is catering or curating your entire love life in order to find you results, depending mm -hmm. on whatever your results are and whatever you deem as success in a matchmaker. We basically expedite that entire process from an expert point of view because amongst our team, we have 30 plus years of experience and our systems are completely flawless. Hundreds of marriages, thousands of couples happily matched. But there are some Amazing. misconceptions about matchmaking, right? Mm -hmm. And like a lot of people would go to matchmaking right towards like like their last resort because when I was doing my research, mm -hmm. there is a few misconceptions, right? Could you debunk some of them? Definitely. I would say that the men that come to us don't see it as a last resort. They see it as the only option because of maybe the field that they're in, maybe the popularity that they already have, maybe the uh, lifestyle that they lead, that this is the only option for them to find a quality, valuable partner. Mm -hmm. And you, you've obviously been doing it for a few years now here yeah. in Dubai. How many marriages oh. have, have come from this? So we recently had our first engagement and oh, i'm so happy because i only opened up my agency october 2021 okay yeah yeah and okay. then my global partnership started in 2022 so the first one that i did without my partner is like i am so incredibly over the moon because he's probably one of my favorite favorite clients ever and i'm so happy for them Amazing. And will the wedding be in Dubai or do Who knows? Oh, <laughs> as long as it happens, I just oh, <laughs> maybe I'll maybe I'll get an invite. <laughs> you, you probably will I because so. obviously, you know, you you're I orchestrated it. it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Mm -hmm. And um in terms of yourself, yeah. where do you actually see this going? Like because oh, Dubai's a new city mm -hmm. and your services are of need, clearly. Yes. Where do you actually see this going in the next few years? So I see us like we are already like the number one matchmaking agency for high net worth, ultra high net worth individuals here. I would love for us to expand more into the GCC region. Mm -hmm. Now, I run Middle East and UK, but I would love for our agency to expand into Saudi. Mm -hmm. We do have clients that are from the other um, other regional countries like Bahrain, Qatar. 
but they come to Dubai to date. So I really want to expand my database in these other countries because the expat population is growing quite rapidly. And I'd love to tap into that market and kind of dominate GCC. Okay. And do you act all your clients, I don't know, you can't give us too much information. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say that they're like, um, if they're from Abu Dhabi, are they mm -hmm. like Emirati or are they like mostly expats? We have everything. So I actually was shocked because when I first started the agency, I really thought that it was going to be expats yeah, reaching yeah. out to me. Yeah, because that's what I thought. I thought mostly it'd be expats. Exactly. But in all honesty, I would say it's 50-50 in terms oh, wow. of Emirati slash GCC clients and expat clients. Oh, wow. 50-50. Yeah. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And um, from your experience of like dating, um, dating in Dubai. Yeah. What would you say the common mistakes men are making when dating you? <laughs> Stop buying her a present before you go on the date. <laughs> it's not going to work out. <laughs> Depends what it is, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for me, I mean, my love language is gifts. Is but it really? okay, okay. <laughs> what I will say is... um. Stop. I mean, it just depends on what you're looking for, right? Because some people do want to lead with the money foot. And that is the kind of partner that they want to attract. I remember one of my first clients, he told me, I want a partner who values me for my money. Literally, that's what he wanted. And we have everything in our database. So I was like, okay, that's easy. Why do you think boop, that boop, is? Boop, boop, boop. I think that some people might subsidize that for personality. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That might be mean, <laughs> meaning no, no, that, no, yeah. yeah, meaning that um, maybe he feels that's all he had to offer, which is kind of sad. But um, I mean, we can do it all for you. So it's fine. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so interesting. It, it is interesting. So it just depends. Like you really need to uh, think about what kind of partner you want to attract. Like what what is your end goal? Right. And work backwards from there. Like you think about like when you build a business. Right. What's your end goal? Then you work backwards from there. And it's really funny because people always kind of have a comment whenever I say to date, like you're the CEO of your dating life, you have to make hard cutthroat decisions sometimes. And men do it very easily. I think that women need to do it more easily as well. Women don't make decisions. Like I know this mm -hmm. girl who's been dating this guy and he just won't commit. Bye. He's, yeah. He won't Is that commit. What you want? And, yeah. and, it, and it's like, He's not ready to commit and he won't commit. And, and it's like you see him uh, not committing, especially when you see him out. Mm -hmm. And it's like she's ho hanging on to the hope that he might commit. Whereas like mm. I would just, from my opinion, yep. like how I am or how my mom raised me, would be like, what are you doing? Bye. Yep. And the minute he says he's not ready to commit, I wouldn't waste my time. But yes. No, I'm, I'm going to piggyback on that. Yeah. Because I think that women need to be more cutthroat and date from the point of view that, okay, what's your end goal? Yeah. If your end goal is marriage and a family, then why are you wasting time with somebody who tells you up front, I don't, I'm not ready for a commitment. I don't want this. I don't want that. And holding on to that hope. Because I think that also what happens too, right, is... <laughs> And I'll say this, and I don't want to offend anybody. No, no, you should. But Keep it real. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that um, being more cutthroat, it might be maybe against the grain of what, what you're used to doing. Because women, we do tend to be more of people pleasers. Oh uh, yeah, empath yeah, em empathy, and yeah, we're just like you know, constantly try to mm -hmm. make sure people feel comfortable and safe. Definitely. But when you start dating like the CEO of your life and putting yourself on a pedestal. It's much easier from a pedestal point of view when you know all of the star achievements, successes you have, and all of the qualities that you bring to a relationship and what you bring to the table. It's much easier to see all of the green and the red flags, period. So you need to start dating from that standpoint. Okay, how many red flags do you need to see <laughs> for you to cut it off? I think uh, <laughs> for me, I'm, I'm a one red flag kind of person. <laughs> But it's also because um, I have a goal in mind. So if my goal is something, then why am I going to waste time? I also, I'm in the middle of building three different businesses. I have zero time and effort to waste on anybody or anything. And when somebody tells you something, believe them. Take them at face value. If they say, I'm not ready for this, or I don't want that, trust me, they don't. 
they're telling you yeah, yeah. and it gives them that excuse later on in in the to relationship you, to be like well i told you i didn't want anything okay why did i waste all that time then Done. Yeah, 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 because I feel like a lot of people do hang on to the hope and they think that they can change a man or a girl. It depends, mm-hmm. you know, it works both Anything. ways. Yep. Yeah, it works both ways. It's not just girls hanging on to it. There's guys. No, that guys as well. Guys as well. Like, I hear it. Yeah. yeah mm-hmm. Hanging on thinking that the partner will change. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of like your experience and, you know, you, you come across so many different people, all walks of life. <laughs> right. Yeah everyone's going through the same thing right in, definitely in, in every single relationship doesn't matter mm-hmm. how rich mm-hmm. you are how poor you are correct what are the common things that you're seeing people are going through in in current relationships right now a lot of people date from the standpoint of does he or she like me instead of do i like them and when you start putting those boundaries up and dating from a pedestal you start asking yourself these questions instead of seeking validation in a partner. That happens all the time. Do you think we're living in a world of seeking validation? That's why it transfers <sighs> into our relationships. I think that that underlying question has always probably been there. Yeah. But maybe more so nowadays where uh, people are slaves to the likes, to the views, to all of this. Not everybody. Obviously, this I'm just talking in mass here. But um, yes, that could definitely have an effect on how people see their own worth. Does it come? Mm-hmm. Do you think that it comes from childhood as well? As well, mm. or not? <laughs> I think everything stems from childhood. <laughs> <laughs> Those that age two to seven is so important. <laughs> but um, but that doesn't mean that it's ingrained in you and it's cemented in your life forever. I think that there are so many avenues to take in order to work out things that may or beliefs you might have had that affect the way that you are intimate with a partner the way that you seek connection the way that you validate yourself or the way that you uh, deem yourself worthy so there are so many ways like for example one of the things that I've done in my life and it wasn't in relation to uh, love it was more in relation to money I sought a rapid transformational therapist Helen Plage woo woo in Dubai she's amazing what is that so what is ooh, a rapid- what is a rapid transfer? I don't know what that is. Yes. So rapid transformational therapy is a form of hypnosis or it is hypnosis. But you, when you go to see Helen, what you do is you would fill out a questionnaire beforehand. You kind of tell her like what you want to focus on. But then she has a session with you, tries to figure out like the root of it and what maybe you really should be focusing on instead. My, mine was money blockages. This is when I first opened up my business. And then she puts you under hypnosis. And you go back and you don't even realize it's these childhood memories that are embedded in your brain that have kind of created this relationship or this um, relationship, but also thinking and belief on a certain topic. So for me, it was money. Right. And then you unwind it. Why was it? Why was yours money? Um, I think that growing up. Right. So my father's family had started a um, family business. So we own parking garages and property in the city. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mother grew up in a different lifestyle. So I felt like there were some kind of like maybe not battles, but like conflicting uh, views on money growing up. And uh, yeah, I wanted to work that out. I also had a very bad habit of spending more than I made. So I wanted to change that. And I realized that the stem from it was that my mother wouldn't spend money. And she always be like, don't spend. You have to save for a rainy day. And in my rebellious kind of way. So then any money I had, I would spend it. Didn't matter how much money I made. Obviously, I've worked through that. Now I'm good. (laughs) Might have the odd blip here and there. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, who doesn't love Louboutins? (laughs) But um, yeah, so when I went through that whole hypnosis with Helen, she helped me unwind those thoughts. And you actually, when, when you're under the hypnosis, you talk to your childhood self. You talk to your mother at that time, your grandfather at that time. And then she gives you a meditation to do afterwards. That is a lot about like affirmations mm-hmm. that will then help to rewire your brain uh, in whatever you're trying to change. And how many sessions did it take you to? Oh, One. wow. One session. That's why they call it rapid transformational therapy. <laughs> how long was it? Uh, two and a half to three hours. So it, it, it was a longer session. And you know that I said, so my clients who come to us and they need 
maybe they have blockages in love, maybe they're a bad breakup, going through a divorce or had a bad di uh, divorce, I send them to RTT. And I know that you had Sadia on here before. Absolutely love Sadia. Yes, <laughs> so uh, our clients are also sent to her if they need to work out some relationship issues oh. for ongoing therapy, we send them. So when you join us, it's a holistic package. You get styling if you're female hair, makeup, professional photos, everything. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. How interesting, because I've not... Okay, this whole matchmaking thing is completely yeah. new to me. That's why I love having different types of guests on. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you've got, it's actually really in-depth. It's not yes. literally finding one person and then setting them up with that person. Mm -mm. You go through everything. I talk about it being an internal and external makeover in order to be your best self to attract that best partner for you. Because when you're feeling like a 10 out of 10, you become yeah. a yeah. better picker of a partner. Yeah. If you are not like one of the questions, and I'm going to say this, man, this might tri trip me up a little bit. But <laughs> one of the questions I ask in my screening call is how do you rate yourself one to 10? And if you rate yourself anything lower than an eight and a half, I don't take you on as a client. Yeah, <laughs> I don't. I just go okay, you know what, I can recommend you to do X, Y, Z before we invite you to be a full-time member. Okay, mm -hmm. eight and a half. <laughs> that's my cutoff. Eight and a half, I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> I'd purposely, I'd yeah. be like, I don't want to come across like I love myself too much. No, so. but you have to, you have to know that you're a 10. You have to. But what if people that aren't a 10 say they're a 10? Um, I mean, I'm also, I'm from New York. I have a good read on people. So yeah, I can yeah. tell right away okay. <laughs> if we're going to be a, like a good match for one another in terms of matchmaking. And also like that call I was explaining before, that preliminary match session where we get to know your type. You can say, oh, I'm open to everything. But really, you're not. Um, I see the way that you're responding to the profiles, certain questions that you're asking about each profile. This then helps me uh, decide if you, we'd have a good, successful relationship as matchmaker and client. You know, one of the things um, I have seen, um, especially being from like the UK, mm -hmm. um, same ethnicity marriages. Are you same. seeing less of that? Way mm -hmm. less. I like, it's interesting we're talking about um, clients from this region. I would say only one of my clients from this region want to be with somebody from this region. All of the other clients that I have, um, different european asian really? british yeah oh wow interesting it's, and and that's why i was saying before like when i first opened up the agency i really thought it was going to be expats western expats and it's not i have so many clients from all over south asia gcc asian british australian american we have every swiss we just took on a swiss guy we have everything yeah oh, interesting mm -hmm. because you know, like in London or or other places, you, you'd kind of see like a lot of same cultures getting married to each other. That's at home. Do you think it's like homogeneous? Like maybe they're living in like that neighborhood or like that kind of the proximity settling? Uh, there's th Yeah, maybe. But there's mm -hmm. also other sayings like if you've got, say, for example, you're from uh, the Arabic culture, mm -hmm. you know that the woman that you're marrying is going to have those same things. Values. Those maybe. values mm -hmm. and knows how to cook those certain foods and mm -hmm. that sort of stuff but here you're seeing so many different people getting married to each other in different cultures and stuff how do you think those marriages will last yes now what you're talking about those people who maybe grew up in the same area married in the same area might live in the same area most people that come to a place like dubai most of us come on our own away from our family away from our regular set of friends, and then you are exposed to more, and you are able to date the map. I think that compatibility is really rooted in those hobbies, habits, and interests. Obviously, having similar values, that helps as well. There are some people who that their deal breakers are religion. Their deal breakers are culture. I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. It is whatever works for the two of you. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Great. So you, we spoke about like same 
ethnicity marriages. Mm -hmm. What about religion? Are um, you seeing like hmm. people of the same religion marrying, or are you seeing them, you know, marry uh, marry like a Muslim person marry a Jewish person? <laughs> what an odd combination for me yeah. to pick. But you know, like a Muslim and a, uh, an Indian, like, are you seeing? You know what's interesting is what I see more of, and this is just our clients. I'm not saying the world is that more people aren't, um, I guess, affi affiliating themselves with a with organized religion. I mm -hmm. see a lot more people coming in. I'm spiritual. Or I was raised Catholic. I was raised Muslim, but I don't practice. Mm -hmm. And um, I will say that the ones or our clients who do come to us who are religious, they do expect their partner to have the same religion. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I will say that. And are you seeing a lot of that or not? That's that's my c no, that's yeah. because I feel like a lot of people are like shifting away from that. Yes. And it's not as mm -hmm. like strict. Like they're not as strict on that side as they used to be. Correct. That's that that's, that's what, what I see. Yeah. But what I will say is that our clients who are seeking marriage and raising a family who do who maybe religion is more of a central part of their life. They do want um, a partner who has the same or would convert. Would convert. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Because that's like, because I thought, because we're, we're living in a world now where everyone's essentially connected to each other in different mm -hmm. parts of the world. And, you know, people go study in like Western countries and stuff. Yes. And they fall in love with like the Western culture. Mm -hmm. um, and religion isn't that big of a deal to people anymore. But let's just say, um, if you've ever had a case, have you ever had someone that is like, um, let's just say Muslim, marry someone that's non-Muslim, but that person isn't practicing, but the marriage still works? Do you, th <laughs> do you think that's the case? Um, yes, if family is not involved. Okay. Yes, we have had cases where just different religions, but they're building a partnership together. Maybe they're married, but there wasn't family. I think that it gets a little uh, tricky if one person is practicing and then they are raising a family, then those kind of questions come into line of, well, we don't want to confuse the children. How are we going to raise our children? So I think like those kind of uh, questions and conversations happen then. Mm -hmm. And um, you obviously focus on ultra high net worth clients. Yes. Why did you focus on that demographic? So when I first started my agency, it was more for like high net worth or people who could uh, afford the services. I mean, I love talking about money. Can I talk about money on here? Yes, you can. Okay, good. <laughs> mm. So my first package ever was three matches for 10,000 dirham. That's uh, 2,500 pounds. 2,700 It's not, bad. It's not, not bad. bad at all. That's, so it I was think excessive. it's worth it. It is, especially... Yeah, the kind of women that we have in our database, of course it's worth it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the service that we provide, right? But um, so then my prices started increasing the more popular the service started getting because then I was like, hey, I want to make sure that I'm delivering quality mm -hmm. for my clients. Yeah. So obviously I had to increase my prices. My prices then got up to 25,000 dirham, which is like 5,000 pounds. Um, but then when I was asked by the global partnership that I have now, so now I am, uh, affiliated with Millionaires Club. So Patty Stanger, Millionaire Matchmaker, if you know her, amazing, her company, and then Sync Matchmaking with our group together. So we are six expert matchmakers that match make around the globe. I run Middle East and the UK. Now with them and that partnership, they train me in all of their systems mentored me in the way that they match and gosh like they have such an amazing success rate we mentioned before hundreds of marriages thousands of happy couples 96 percent success rate and in all those systems while well mentoring our prices now start at thirty thousand us dollars but there's a major difference because our memberships are unlimited so dependent on what you're looking for we will tell you how much time we think that you would need a membership for and in that time frame whether it's three months four months five months six months some people come on for eight months whatever that time frame is you get unlimited matchmaking opportunities that doesn't mean you're going on a date every day because it's exhausting <laughs> yeah 
but it does mean that you get to say yes or no to as many profiles as we present you. And you can go on as many dates as you want. It's just dependent on you and your schedule. It also offers you access to our global database. Like I mentioned before, we are the largest matchmaking database in the globe with over 40,000 members. Matchmakers come to us <laughs> oh, wow. when they need matches. I'm literally working with a major company now that's like, hey, I have an ultra high net worth guy. He needs to find women in London and New York. Can you help me? Easy. Database. Here we go. Just sent her six matches the other day. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Seem like you really enjoy what you do. Oh, creating love for somebody and helping somebody find that connection is the most rewarding experience. I always say, oh my gosh, I'm getting so many points in heaven. God is like, good job, girl. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like, I love it. And when you get that feedback from clients, when they're like, did you create this woman in a lab? You're like, no, but we found her for you. <laughs> it's, it's really the best nice. thing ever. It's mm -hmm. nice. Um, we live in a, a world now where people are just doing something just for the sake of doing it. Mm -hmm. um, and they're just trying to make ends meet. But you, you know, you you started off in teaching in Dubai. Yeah. Uh, you lost your job because you started an Instagram account. Yeah. Here you are, like putting people together, creating stories, memories, mm -hmm. uh, basically helping people build a legacy. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're doing. Um, mm -hmm. And it's really nice to to see someone absolutely enjoy and love what they do. I love love. Just <laughs> <laughs> I do. Do you? <laughs> I do. I love it so much. That's good. Um, mm. And and I think it's it's so nice that you're so open about it because online I went through your social media. Yeah. You, you talk about your history of dating and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's nice that you've been vulnerable online. Um, I have a question that I've been itching to ask you. <gasps> Go for it. And I've seen a lot of... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen a lot of women read it. Mm. And it's a book called Why Men Love Bitches. Okay. Yes. Have you read it? I've read parts of it. What do you think of it? I would say, so from what I've read, keep in mind, I've not read the entire book. From what I've read, I think it's really about boundaries and valuing yourself over putting a partner in front of you is my understanding and my takeaway from the excerpts that I've read. And I would say, yeah, that's like dating, like you're the CEO of your dating life. You should be putting your values and your goals ahead of maybe being a people pleaser and trying to date and be with somebody who doesn't fit into your quote unquote requirements. Because uh, I posted, because I've read that book okay. and I actually read it years ago and then I put it down because my mom taught me all of that anyway. Mm. And um, Exactly, that's yeah, true too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, and I think even my sisters, I, we were laughing about it and we were like, Mom um, wrote the book. <laughs> Mom Ghost right. I think <laughs> Mom wrote this book. And my sister was laughing. Um, but I posted it on my story and mm. I had someone that's actually of high net worth respond saying it's a horrible book. It's not true. Mm. Uh, real men don't like it. Um, okay, bitter Betty. <laughs> yeah, okay. Because I wanted to yeah. ask like someone yeah. of your profession, mm -hmm. someone that's got experience working with those sorts of people yeah. that... It is something that women need to do. They need to set boundaries. Uh, if if you don't, what is that saying? If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And why wouldn't you want to stand up for yourself, right? And another thing that I wanted to talk about with like dating like you're the CEO of your life, like the reason why I say that is because let's say you're hiring for a job, mm -hmm. right? And for some people, the most important position is their partner, right? I'm not saying for everybody, for some people. And that position of a partner has certain requirements to it, right? Whatever those qualities you're seeking in a person. Remember, be that before <laughs> you seek that in somebody else. But um, beyond that, why would you hire somebody for that job if they couldn't fulfill those job duties, firstly? Secondly, why would you pay them if they weren't doing their job? So that's what I think about when dating from that standpoint and maybe that's relating to the book as well of having those boundaries and being like no nah, not into it moving on listen you couldn't do this no problem I can't do that yeah and that's how it is yeah because I've been I, I've actually wanted an expert's mm -hmm. opinion on this book because I yeah. hear so many mixed reviews and I actually see <laughs> 
so many girls actually reading that book. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people have different things to say about it. So I'm, I'm glad that you gave your uh, honest <laughs> opinion about that. Um, you know, one thing I really want to know, um, because I've seen your growth and mm -hmm. uh, what's to come for you in the future. And I really, really want you to do well. And I'll be following oh, you very closely. Thank you. Um, <laughs> what do you want to be known for? So I want to be known for. So I'm putting this out there right now. I'm going to write a book and it's going to be called From Broke to Billionaire, The Billion Dollar Business of Love. Nobody take it because now it's written in the stars. <laughs> and what I want, so not only the success, obviously, of the matchmaking business and that personalized one-to-one -one service that we have, but in the creation of the app that I have coming out and that we're developing at the moment, creating meaningful connections for people that are seeking an alternative to what is out there right now and being able to assist them in forming that, right? Because I mean, this life, and I feel like a lot with social media, the internet and everything, we're losing a lot of touch with people, people, human interaction. I, agree. I know there's a lot of robots, AI, I all agree, of that out I there. I mean, <laughs> it's definitely needed. It is, and really getting that face-to-face -face interaction because I read so many stats about depression, so many stats about lack of intimacy that's happening now, and I really want to flip that and try to promote more of that human interaction, positive human interaction that is much needed in the world that we're in in 2023. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think you've come to the best mm -hmm. place to do it. Yeah. Uh, Dubai's got the most amount of millionaires right now as a city. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and I definitely feel like the men that, all the women that you're going to attract will definitely yes. find the right person because they've got you behind them. Oh, thank you. Um, <laughs> and I've really, really enjoyed having you on this podcast. Oh, um, Hamida, this has been such a pleasure. No, I, I you know, um, most of the time when I sit with people, I'm always, I'm just curious. I mm -hmm. ask questions that actually benefit me. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know stuff. Mm -hmm. And you've been such a nice energy to be around. Um, and I'll definitely be following you very closely. Yes. Just to wrap up the show. Yes. I always like to ask my guests, mm -hmm. what is your favorite quote? Oh, gosh. I wish I were prepared for this. <laughs> Uh, 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 can I quote like a song? Of course. Okay, so there is a song out by Taylor Swift <laughs> and it's called Midnight Rain. And it really, I feel like it's like the biography of my life, right? And she says in it uh, something along the lines of, um, he wanted it all the same while I was chasing that fame. <laughs> I'm not chasing fame, but I mean, I feel like I'm a little Dubai famous already, but... Yeah. <laughs> something along the lines and she, then she goes into like how he wanted something different and then she has catapulted into a different atmosphere and stratosphere with all the things that she's accomplished so I'm that's gonna listen I am. to that song later it might be my new gym song <laughs> <laughs> exactly <laughs> amazing amazing thank you very much for coming on yes thank you for having me amazing guys so do not forget to like and subscribe and let me know in the comments what you think i cannot wait to hear your feedback take care bye bye